Thank you, and uh, Congressman Burgess. Thank you, and <clears throat> Chairman Panaki, welcome to our to our committee. Let me, uh, uh, Dr. Paul made an observation that was is so important. It, it just bears repeating the concept that the banks that got into trouble were able to get money at a very, very low interest rate and now turn around and loan it back to you at a much higher interest rate. Uh, and there is no, there's no, there is no reason for them to make loans to the entrepreneur, the small business person. They are actually making money just working off this system that it appears to me that the Fed has provided for them. So I, I do urge you to look at that. And you talked about uh, if the creditworthy business who is being given an appraisal that then makes them appear non-creditworthy, and this is a real problem. I heard from people all over my district during the break that this is going on today uh, in almost any congressional district in which you look in the country. And to the extent that you offered help in that, I, I intend to take you up on that offer. I will have several of these individuals visiting me here in Washington next week, and and I would like for them to be able to tell someone at the Fed just what they told me last week, and part of it's mark to market, but part of it's a very l slow rate of getting appraisals back, and the appraisals are so slow in coming back that they in fact do not reflect rapidly changing market conditions, and, and people in the real world can't they can't function in the system that we've created for them. So I think Representative Sanchez had had some very good points, and, and I will also take you up on that offer because I think it needs to, uh, I, I, I think there needs to be more, uh, there needs to be more hands-on from the Fed about what is what, what are the actual effects of the monetary policy that that, that you're pursuing. Y you also made a comment that uh, the Fed is uh, is open. I know Dr. Paul talks a lot about auditing the Fed and knowing what what's in there. Is there a way for me to know what the Fed holds as far as real holdings in my congressional district? You hear stories on the radio about the Fed owning a shopping center in Oklahoma City, for example. I didn't know you guys were into that, but what do you own in my congressional district? Now, if I have a constituent ask me that question, am I going to be able to get that information? So the answer is yes. Um, the, the only kind of strange assets like that that you're referring to, basically what we own is treasuries and the liabilities of Fannie and Freddie. That's basically what we own. We do have some assets that were involved in the um, bailouts of Bear Stearns and AIG, which are still on our balance sheet. That's about 5% of our balance sheet. I'll go, you know, again, this was not something we wanted to do, but we didn't have an option at the time. That notwithstanding, we have released all the information about what's in those, in that group of assets and includes information about, you know, who, who the loan is to, et cetera. So, yeah, yes, you can find that out. All right, I appreciate that. And I, I, I will have someone from my office follow up with on that. Now, you mentioned in, in response to Senator Brownback's question about the, uh, uh, the concern about the, the structural deficit and, and what about the tax provisions that are due to expire and assumptions made that all of those expire. Uh, here's a, com a report from the Joint Committee on Taxation. I won't question you about it because it's not fair to do that. There's 50 pages of tax cuts that are expiring in the next 10 years. Some of them are quite obscure. It appears to me some of them should expire. But have people at the Fed gone through this and really put pencil to paper about which of these I doubt very much that Congress is going to let the alternative minimum tax kick in. I don't know quite what we're going to do about that or how we're going to pay for that before the end of the year, but we always do something. So I expect you're correct in that assumption. But has, has someone at the Fed gone through this entire uh, report from the Joint Committee on Taxation looking at the expiring tax provisions over the next 10 years so that we have some idea of, of what we're dealing with as far as the, mm -hmm. the, what you term the structural deficit going forward? Well, again, we were using this uh, publicly available CBO uh, projections there, and, and on the tax side, and, and again, I'm not making any, I'm not advocating any policy or anything like that. I'm just, just telling you how the CBO has done these projections. That particular projection is one where, um, y you know, all the expiring taxes are extend, uh, tax cuts are extended, and, and, and quantitatively, by far, the two biggest are the 2001-2003 
tax cuts and the uh, AMT. And those dominate in terms of the dollar amount. And there are a whole bunch of other ones like the research and development credit and other things like that, which are often extended, but of course may not be. But, uh, but all of that, of course, directly affects the policy that we all talk about that we should be concentrating on and, and job creation and, and, and job growth. Just one final thought to leave you with. I mean, I heard from so many people over the break, and you referenced this in your testimony, the, the, the young person getting out of college today who's a terrible difficulty finding a job and may set a tone for their productive years that is, that is forever tainted by their experience because of this recession. And then you have uh, the person at my age, what I like to refer to as the late boomer, who also is having difficulty, the person 45 to 60. Those jobs do not exist. And that is really where we've got to look at both the beginning end and the, and the, and the latter end of the employment years because they're both in serious the, trouble. The gentleman's time has expired, but uh, Mr. Bodanke may answer. Mm -hmm. No, I would, I would certainly agree with that. Both, both ends, uh, including people near retirement, um, are, are um, uh, having difficulty, and there are different ways to address those different parts, but uh, it's clear that very long-term unemployment is not just a short-term effect, it has a, a long-term implication for the person's uh, ability to mm -hmm. earn a living in the labor market. Thank you.